Yeah, that's that joint right there. Hush, hush. That's Cool Roski. Well, that's Cocaine featuring Cool Roski, produced by The Chill. You know what I mean? West Coast, East Coast. And uh, yeah, that's a banger right there. That's a banger. Well, you know, definitely um, want to start this off, you know, because there's a connection, a reason why we played that um, that dope ass music video right there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, one of the connections is the queen that stands before us. Uh, that's Samantha Lavelle. Welcome to the Pinoy Podcast. Oh, thank you so much. Definitely honored to be here. Honored and humbled to be here. Oh, uh, I mean, the, the, the honor is all mine and, and definitely appreciate you um, stopping by. Uh, you're definitely someone um, that I saw as an inspiration um, as far as uh, doing what you're doing. And, and I know it, it definitely can't be, uh, can't be easy to do the things that you do because you wear many hats. Um, you know, definitely being in this 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 crazy hip hop business, but uh, yeah, I mean, salute to you, and um, definitely want to to um, to talk to you and uh, just to 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 know a little bit more about some of the things that you do and 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 um, and how you manage to do them. You know, um, so yeah, definitely welcome. Um, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, that, that hush video, you know, by uh, Cool Rock. You know, they actually filmed that in uh, Gershwin uh, Linden Park back in May. Um, yes, same sir. park <clears throat> that we had our um, our first annual classic hip hop and R and B cookout event two months later right. in July. Right. Yeah, so we just been pushing it. You know that that was that song is a perfect blend of you got the East Coast, you got the West Coast coming together, and then just bringing that real organic hip hop back. Yes, definitely a lot of lessons um, to be learned from that from that song and and from that uh, from that video. You got Tretch up in there. It's just a a, a, a dope vibe. You know what I mean? Definitely a dope vibe. And um, uh, salute to Cool Roski, salute to Cocaine, salute to everybody that was involved in that. But um, in particular, Cool Roski, you uh, you represent him. Uh, yes, I'm um, Cool Rock's publicist. So I've been his publicist for a few months now. Um, I actually met him a few months back. He just appreciated my appreciation for that organic, real hip hop. So we've just always been friends for a long time. And then he started noticing things I've been doing within the past year. And he's like, yo, you have got to be my publicist. He said, I would definitely love you to do that. And I was honored. I mean, that's one of the people I grew up on. So for a legend to ask someone like myself that, my God. Yeah, I mean, that that's definitely um that definitely had to be a humbling experience for you. You know, uh cool rise definitely, like you said, legend is is one one of the words that you can use for him. Pioneer is another one. Um, you know, I, I for one feel that um we all know the the, the fat boys are legends and and everything like that but i still don't feel that they get they just desserts as as they should the respect should be there 360 degrees for what they lay down in hip-hop and definitely um you know we should never forget that but i mean yeah i mean cool rise definitely i mean and one thing about you know when, when you know back in the days listening to the fat boys you know you know you would think you, you kind of laughed at some of the content mm-hmm. and shit like that sorry i, I Excuse me, Sam. I curse. You good. You good. But um, yeah. You know, uh, you, 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 people would you know kind of laugh at the content and all you can eat and all like that. But one thing though, I mean, it's and and rest in peace to Prince Mark D. But Cool Rob versus was so hard body, so hard. It don't matter what they were rhyming about. If they was rhyming about getting something to eat or whatever, or they had a yes. jam, it's just that he represented that that just the hard body rap that went on to like infect, you know, some others such as a, a, a Kooji rap and then from a Kooji rap it manifested to somebody else. I can hear Cool Ra rhymes or the foundation of his rhymes in a lot of dudes raps, <clears throat> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's definitely, um, definitely, uh, uh, you know, very dope that, um, that, uh, that y'all are working with each other and that he definitely saw um you know saw your talent you know what i mean and saw that they uh you know that um that y'all can work together with that so that's a blessing that's a blessing 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yes. No, it was just important, you know, to, to keep their legacy alive. You know, the thing about the fat boys, you know, we laughed, you know, me growing up on them, like you said, laughed at the all you can eats. But it was that, you know, music that made you feel good and made you smile. They had no cursing in their music. Right. So it was positive. It can touch on various audiences and just. I guess the characters that they created, you know, they were kind of our comic relief and crush group. You know, they stole the show. You know, they yeah. were yeah, they were supposed to, fun fact, only being like one scene in crush group. Mm. But then a director, you know, would just kind of seeing what they were doing and they stole the soul the show. So you saw them in several scenes. Dope. So we wanted to keep that alive, and especially after losing Mark, you know, February 18th of this year. I think it really put a lot of things in perspective for him. We hate to say that, but he's the last member standing. So we want to keep their memory alive. We want to keep it going. You know, like you said, they were definitely pioneers for, for hip hop, you know, you, you know, big and beautiful. You know what I'm right. saying? So right. That, and that's what, I mean, the, the think about it now, just to put in a, a simple perspective, uh, think about a world where there, there, there wasn't any, Fat Boys music. If you are a hip hop fan, just think about that. Think about the horrible place we would be if we never had a Fat Boys album to put that smile on our face to give us that energy to, to you know, to do what we do. It's a lot of songs we can, you know, live without. But the Fat Boy collection and 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 them is uh what they bought the contributions to the jam that they bought is is undeniable. So yeah, salute, salute. Mm -hmm. what, what I wanted to get into is um. You said you know um, you're his publicist, right? Mm -hmm. What what uh, exactly does a publicist do or entail? All right, it entails a lot. You know, we are the you know their media plug. You know, we have to do the get them in touch with all the news outlets. You know, whether it's a, a write up or you know getting them on various shows. You know, just mm -hmm. keeping them out there. Um, mm -hmm. published out there in various media works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's definitely a, a big uh, thing of a publicist. Also, like, it's their PR, making sure their image is on point, promoing them, you know, making sure that, you know, everything is, is, you know, just spot on, just putting the best image out there. I mean, I do that for Certified Nation Entertainment, so it's just... Right. It goes along with the territory. So that, that's basically the, the job of the publicist. We are the media outlet. Right, it, that that sounds sounds very busy, especially during this social media age. Like I'm quite sure, like being a publicist back in the days, like saying the golden hip hop era during the '90s was like kind of different from being a publicist here in uh, 2021. Um, and and I know that has to be like you know, in some some aspects is is uh, it may be um, easy where you can probably connect to certain people. Uh, and that probably wasn't so easy back uh, back in the days, but also it has to be difficult just trying to um, get to all these different outlets and 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 to present your client to them. You know what I mean? It must be you know because it, it 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 has to be a lot of uh, a lot of sitting down in front of the computer or, or in front of the phone. A lot of hours doing that. Oh, yes. Yes. And you got to be very um, you got to be engaging. You got to be mm -hmm. a people person. You got to be into networking. I mean, anything even as simple as simple as Clubhouse, which I push. That's a heavy free networking tool to go right. on. You can link up with there's, you know, people with within, you know, the media all over Clubhouse, the music industry, you know, so just all these little things, you know, you got to you got to do it and you got to be able to multitask. That's a big thing. Right, for sure, for sure. I mean, um, Clubhouse, and that's a pretty new format, right? Mm hmm That came out pretty much last year was when it really got popular. It was in the beta stages, 2020, you know, all of us going through this pandemic at home, and you're just linking up, connecting with people all over the world. Like, it used to only be, um, like, a, a U.S. thing. But then right. a few, but um, within the past few months, now it's open to everyone internationally, and I've connected with so many people from all over the world. It's amazing. So many the connections, some of the connections I have now is because of Clubhouse. And I mean, just briefly, without you know, uh, mm -hmm. like you know, exposing any of your business secrets, how like would 
because I'm this is something I'm probably interested because in, I'm not mm-hmm. uh hooked up with Clubhouse is how how do you network on there? Like, you know, so if you're you know, like, you know, yeah, how, how do you network mm-hmm. on Clubhouse? Well, first of all, I um I obviously involved in music. So I try to engage in a lot of the music rooms um that are playing a lot of indie artist music because that's another thing I do. Uh, aside okay. from cool rock, I help a lot of independent artists. You engage in these music rooms. So you have industry people in these rooms, you've got DJs in these rooms, which shout out to the DJs. You gotta be connected with DJs to really push your music out there. Mm-hmm. Big salute to them. So all these various people, you know, you just get in the rooms. You don't have to necessarily start talking yet. Sometimes I don't talk. Sometimes I'm just in the room, but then they might start asking me a question and looking at my bio. So you just, you know, you slowly just building that relationship with people. So I, right. I definitely push that. It's free networking. I've had my artist music being played on there, posting it online. I mean, it's it's a great tool. I think I think you would love it. It just depends on what room you go into. So I'm definitely gonna check that out. I mean, because um, you know, um you dropped a jewel with uh with um StreamYard and letting me know about StreamYard and this is the reason why I'm talking to you right now and trying to set off my little uh mm-hmm. podcast career. So I'm I'm forever grateful and forever thankful for that. You know um but uh, uh also with you being a publicist and dealing with different artists um the difficult artists uh do you, it's a this is an odd question, but I'm gonna ask okay. it. You know, um, do you think it's worth dealing with a difficult, talented artist? I think it depends. I, I think it depends on their level of talent and how difficult <laughs> they are with you. See, my my kind of approach is. I'm pretty much cool with anybody. I deal with all types of personalities, you know, like I might come off sweet, but you know, I have my, I have my little, you know, my little smarts too. So it's like, okay. So I have a way of kind of putting things in check. Like, okay, listen, we can come together, come to an agreement on this. And, you know, it's, it's just like show and prove. Now, Mm -hmm. some artists, there's certain artists that, I couldn't work with because, you know, a lot of things being a woman in this industry, there are some artists or some males that will try to test you if you know what I mean. So there's there's just things that I refuse that I'm going to do and that I shouldn't, you know, shouldn't have to do. So there's some people I've just had to cut off. It's as simple as that. Right now. And that's the thing is, I mean, it's unfortunate, you know, that like the question I'm about to ask Mm -hmm. or 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 the way I'm about to ask it. It's unfortunate that we're we're even in a world of that where I start to question with uh, being a woman. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, that's, to me, even starting to question like that is 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 stupid. That's like being a black guy or right. being a black, you know, it's like you're putting people in, eh, you know what I mean? And that's not, you're, you're a publicist. You're not a woman publicist. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, you know, but the thing is within this industry and you write, you know, this male dominated, dominated industry, you have a lot of, um, you have a lot of monsters and a lot of people who are going to test people, uh, weakness, you know, yes. and see, and see how far they can get with that, you know, and, you know, for you being as strong as, um, as you have been and continue to be strong. I mean, it's a, it's a testament. Cause like I said, being a woman, I'm sorry, no, being a woman, in, yeah, being a woman in this industry, it is a, a, a slight handicap. If I, if I, if I may say, meaning that, um, you know, people may look, may not, um, may not look at whatever position that you may be in. You may be a publicist, you may be a CEO, you may be a, whatever you are, but they won't look at you in a position of strength. Uh, right. And that's, that's, that's unfortunate. And you have a lot of women that's out there doing that, including yourself, who are, who are, you know, changing that narrative, you know what I mean? To a lot mm-hmm. of, excuse my language, Samantha, to a lot of these stupid motherfuckers yep. who are, who are taking advantage of, um, of anyone. It doesn't have to be a woman, but if anyone that they think is, is in their mind, it don't even, don't have to be true. They can think in their mind that this person is weak, but that person can be very, very strong. You know what I mean? But for the fact that they have those thoughts like that makes them a dumb motherfucker. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And that's, and, and it's filled in the industry. The industry is filled with them. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. you know, 
one thing, like I said, I'll say it again, you know, respect women, respect the queen, um, protect her at, at all costs, um, and really soak up the knowledge and the jewels that women have to offer. When, when, when was your first memories and thoughts of hip hop? Uh, slash when was your first thoughts and memories of music? Okay, good question. Well, you know, kind of to start off with those memories, you know, I actually come from a town in Kansas originally, Junction City. It's right by the Fort, um, Fort Riley Army Base. The great thing about that, we're dead set in the middle of the U.S. and being right by the Army Base, you're connected to all coasts of music. Junction City is in, where is that at? Junction City in Kansas. Junction City, Kansas. Kansas, all right. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you good. Junction City, Kansas, right by Fort Riley Army Base. Mm -hmm. So I know back then you were connected with music from everywhere, all over the coast, you know, because we're dead center in the middle. Everyone was, you know, coming in, um, being Mm -hmm. uh, stationed over there. So I remember growing up, I grew up in a single parent household. My mother took me to literally every basement party that you can think of. So I can remember being as young as three, four years old. You know, you're hearing like the songs like, you know, Rapper's Delight. You know, you're hearing um, songs like The Message, you know, LL, I Can't Live Without My Radio. Mm. Also hearing like, you know, Parliament Funkadelic here in Motown. So I grew up on all of those genres ever since I was, like I said, three or four years old. I remember all of this and I just gravitated to it. You remember the vibe? You remember like, you know, when you heard the, like, say, uh, like you said, rap is the light, right? I remember Mm -hmm. when I heard rap is the light, it just, it was something that wasn't there within my body and within my mind was certain, was uh, suddenly implanted there. And it stayed there for a very long time. It currently still lives there. It's like when I heard Rap is the Light or I heard, you know, my first hip hop song was like, oh, oh, shit. You know what I mean? And that mm-hmm. groove that I mean, I'm coming from from Harlem and and coming from, you know, a, a black family, you know, being black, right. I guess. Right? right. You know, uh, it was a lot of soul. It was a lot of old records played and a lot of things. So I grew up with the with the old soul and all that. But once you know that hip hop started you know happening that that it was like something they something was implanted and uh it never left so that's what i'm saying did you experience that vibe like when you when you first heard your you know that that hip hop song that stuck with you Mm-hmm. Well, being, you know, as you know, as a very little kid, you know, you'd sneak down when they're in the basement parties. You see the adults having a good time. So you can right. already see the good vibe that these adults are having. And then as a kid, you're just soaking all of this up. Right. And then you're growing up on that. And then it is a good feeling. Like even to this day, I still feel good hearing that song. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's something you know? that the that 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 was there that lasts a long, long time. You know what I mean? You know, so yeah, definitely. I mean, um, when was it that you you decided that you um wanted wanted to be part of the business of uh of hip hop slash music slash you know the culture? When did you uh, say, okay, you know, I like the music and I love hip hop, but you know, I think I can do something with it business wise. Well, you know, this this started kind of all the way back in high school. Like I was always a, a passionate writer. Like, I was always very good at writing. I took a lot of honors English and I always loved my music, you know, wherever I was hearing music. So I kind of was combining the two. Um, I started writing for the school newspaper music reviews mm-hmm. and I became well known in our um, the local record store sound aquarium. I go in there every week to, to buy the new the latest release, you know, the latest CD and write a review about it. It got to the point people would post it up in their lockers because they like the artists I wrote about. Right. So I remember way back then always wanted to, you know, make, be a journalist. That was like my dream career, but I wanted to be a music journalist. I right. wanted to incorporate that. Right. But, you know, then as life would have it, you know, you get into things in life, you know, life kind of takes over and you don't really, I don't think, you know, you gravitate towards your passion or maybe, I don't think I saw my potential back then. I think that's what it was. So my so all these years, though, I'm building relationships with people, you know, people from my hometown, you know, a lot of them got involved in music. I was moving around, you know, I lived on the East Coast for a long time. Love the East Coast. That's my vibe. 
Um, but I think it really hit me last year, like this epiphany hit me in, in October of last year. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. It was a weird feeling. It was just like, Samantha, I want you to do something with this music. I think because all these artists I knew, these independent artists, this pandemic was really kind of making them at a, at a kind of a downward spiral. You know, they couldn't perform. You know, people just right. did not know what they were going to do, right. you know, with this thing. So someone was telling me just to do something. So I started by just making inspirational videos online, pushing these artists or pushing their music. And then a boy, Pen Game Classic, he reached out to me. He's like, Samantha, my album's dropping November 13th, Graffiti Rap. Can you write a review on it? I'm like, sure. And at first it was like one of those little reviews on like Apple. Right. He's, like, he's like, Sam. That's so dope, yo. Can you write a full review? So I wrote a full review, posted that. He's like, oh, my God. Like, you need to be a part of my team. Like, we got to push this album. And from there, it's just we start pushing the album everywhere on social media. I mean, it's 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 just been a crazy ride. And, it, and things have just been taking off since then with everything. Right. Is it it's, like like when you when uh when you wrote the review, you know, did you? Cause that's a that's an interesting tool mm -hmm. for for artists to use to to promote their music right and was it any kind of certain um uh way that you go about that you went about writing the review uh or did you just let what 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 the music w was telling you did you just let it let it flow from right there or did you uh package it up in a certain type of way I just let it take me there. Like my reviews are not going to be the same that you will see on a newsstand. I actually literally will tap into the artist, tap right. into what the music is telling me and write it from there. So when people are reading it, they're like, yo, like you really like tapped in, like you actually care yeah. about it. Like so that's, listen. Yeah. So that's like my approach. And when other artists started seeing this review, they're like, can you start writing reviews? So I started doing that. And then I just started making like, little videos and stories just to share the music. And I swear, like two weeks later, City of the Great from Certified Nation Entertainment reached out to me on Twitter. And mind you, I hadn't used Twitter in a while, but I figured I'd start using it for this. Right. And he asked me to be, you know, uh, an executive for, in Certified Nation Entertainment. I'm like, what? And I didn't take it serious at first. I was like, oh, you know, is, is this like a, a, a scam? But no, I got on a call with him and it's only right. And second week of December, I became a company executive. So all this in that less than dope. a month. That yeah. is dope. That is dope. Well, yeah. Well, 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 tell us about the company. Tell us about Certified Entertainment. Okay. So Certified Nation Entertainment. No, Certified, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Certified mm -hmm. Nation Entertainment. You see the logo behind me. Mm -hmm. um, we are an entertainment company. So we provide knowledge to the artists so they're not getting scammed because we want to change this narrative. Very uh, important. Yeah, we want to change this narrative. Um, we offer uh, vis visual and audio ser services because we have a videographer. You know, we have a, a mix and master engineer, um, publicist work management i do that uh bookings a and r mm -hmm. so that's all that that we we kind of offer and um the ceo is a uh, city to great i actually manage him too as an artist he's actually the legendary special eds artist mm, okay yeah, okay yeah and he got he got something he got something out right now right city to great oh yes yeah. so he has uh his song uh day one Right, um, right, that's right. his latest single that he's pushing out. Um, his his new album, The Wordsmith, though, is dropping December twenty third. So we're pushing that. Dope. He's got another dope record, You're Welcome, and DJs are soaking that one up too. So any any videos? Yeah. Any videos out there? That's what we're working on the day one video to get to get that out there. Okay, um, so right. that should be um, you know ready to drop pretty soon. Right now, the most current videos we have, he does like a lot of uh, freestyles. He also we also have footage of when he did the uh, performance at the event this past July at the so, uh, yeah. cookout. So if they uh, mm -hmm. they go to go to YouTube, put in "City the Great," right, mm -hmm. and and some good stuff should pop up. Definitely. Yes. Yes. Definitely. That's that's my artist. You know, very very intelligent businessman. Like you know, running a company, black owned company. Um, being under special ed, you know, and salute to special ed because, you know, he salute, definitely, salute. 
he, he's a man, he's a man of few words. He'll like sit in the shadows, but he, he definitely has been, you know, down with City for like 10 years, just supporting, you know, things that he's doing and always shouts us out. So yeah, definitely big salute to him too. Yeah, well, he's uh, he's another, uh, another important brick in the foundation of hip hop. You know what yes. I mean? And um, it's like, I mean, what, what else can be said about special ed that that hasn't been said already you know what i mean he is definitely you know the legend influencer you know pioneer uh and everything else and that's why you know uh i'm definitely so protective of 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 the vets and the legend that's in the legends that that come from this game and won't kind of you know i won't won't tolerate you know disrespect towards them and thinking they as the young people say now Get they give them their flowers, give them all their flowers. You know what I mean? Give them all their flowers, bouquets, trucks of them shits. Move them right up there because they deserve it. Because whoever you've been hearing now, I don't give a shit if it's trap or whatever. Somehow they was influenced by these artists. You know what I mean? There's a foundation yeah. where all this shit come from. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, salute to uh salute to special what without mm -hmm. question. Definitely. Uh, he, he, yeah. And yeah. he deserves a lot of the respect in the world because also knowing the business at 16, he audited the record company and got out of that. I mean, and started owning businesses. So this man is of a whole different intelligence level too. And, and that's something that these artists these days, that's a universal way. They wouldn't know what the, what the hell that is yeah. that he did. You know what I mean? They couldn't even have the, they don't have the gumption to, uh, to do that. You know what I mean? To be mm -hmm. a part of that, you know? But, um, what I wanted to ask is, um, yeah, that'll be a good transition to this, uh, the, the, the state of hip hop, the current state of hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think the current state, um, you know, one word, it's confused. It's at a very confused state. You have these people coming out there and they're calling these people the goats. I'm like, y'all have no idea who the greats are, you right. know, and no disrespect to Lil Wayne, but, you know, there's a lot of people calling him the goat. I'm like, brother, um, he has uh, a, the, <laughs> you know, and not even trying to knock him, but I'm just hearing things like that. So I'm like, it's just a very confused state. Like we have brothers like yourself my team and people who are still bringing out, you know, that real organic hip hop. Right. So it's still there. But I think as far as on the media end, it's very confused. You know, they feel they got to come out with all this, the, the, the fit in the trends and things like that. So yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah, you hit it right. You hit it right on the nose. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little less forgiving as you, I mean, mm -hmm. um, Little Wayne, I mean, you know, for for what it's worth, um, I mean, he really, as far as the culture of hip hop, he hasn't added to it. I'm right. I, I mean, I, I know that might ruffle people's feathers, and people wouldn't like mm -hmm. that. But what 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 it is 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 definitely celebrating people who are are about the about the real hip hop, about the 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 true foundations of hip hop, making music that represent that. Um, people may be like, well, that shit don't get you the bag, right? You know why it doesn't get us the bag? Because you have corporate entities and other people who don't want to see the purity of real hip hop get out there to the people. Because if I may just step on my mm -hmm. soapbox a little bit, Samantha. Go ahead, go ahead, because I'm with you. Because if, if you looked at it, you had, you had, the music of Public Enemy, KRS One, Rakim. Let's go all the way up to Nas, Brand Nubian. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go all the way up to Dead Press, right? Yes. And they said this shit got to stop. This mm -hmm. shit got. We got to cut this shit short because if we really raise a whole generation of people listening to this type of music we are going to create a generation of not only smart people, militant people, uh, political people yes. who really want something for the people, for the people, by the people. And if they're listening to Karis one on one side and then they're listening to NWA on the other side, that mixture is dangerous for us as a government. Mm -hmm. You're right. So 
let's dig down. No disrespect to my Southern people, all right? The ones that y'all know who I'm talking about. Let's dig down to uh, this part of hip hop. These guys is not getting enough light and they love hip hop too. And the bar was lowered. And when mm -hmm. that bar was lowered, it was lowered for a reason to enter a certain type of brand of hip hop, which dumbed down anything else. And now the hip hop that I was talking about, the brand new beings, the, the, the X clans and stuff like that, the public enemies. Now a young motherfucker from Memphis or Harlem or wherever bubble fuck across this uh, country will be like, what the fuck are you trying to kick knowledge, man? Fuck all that knowledge shit. And you looking right. at them like that shit is that's that's so hypocritical what you just said to me, young brother. You know what I mean? Right. Now, now, now I got to be the wise one and I got to be the, you know, but nah, it's just like, really? This is where right. that, that they mission accomplished. They they have won. They have the, this is a, it's a reason why we 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 hear the hip hop that we're hearing on the radio right now. You wouldn't think that the youth would be linked to 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 real hip hop. That, that say, okay, I'm going to carry this tradition on and this is how it's going to be. Not that it got to sound like the old shit because we, we've we seen with Griselda and a lot of other mm -hmm. artists, uh, a, lot of, a lot of other artists that's out there, we've seen that uh, the golden era sound of hip hop um, can get out there to a wide audience. We've seen just now yeah. in a verses, right? You've seen the mm -hmm. verses with Karis One and uh, Big Daddy Kane. Mm, mm, mm. That was 140,000 people that were watching that. They all wasn't um, old people watching nope. it. You know what I mean? So we know that there's a market you know, for it. And that's why yourself, uh, uh, Ski, uh Special Ed, City the Great, everybody that's on your side, because they put trying to preserve real hip hop. On my side, the leftovers and my brothers yes. that's doing their things right there and other people, independent artists that I'm dealing with and working with, you know, Cindy Portier and a lot of other people, they are are, are trying to pres preserve this hip hop because if we don't hold a line and that shit dis dissolves, then it's just, just mindless chaos. You know what I mean? Right. You were speaking in, like real truths there. And that is why, like, I support a lot of indie artists because they don't have to have that control by these higher ups in the industry. They are they can be their selves. You know, they mm -hmm. want to do some real hip hop. They're going to do some real hip hop. I'm Thought Provoker, who I just had on my show a couple of weeks ago. That mm -hmm. dude is organically man into hip hop. He's like 32. But mm. he's got it. Any thought provoke a track you're going to hear, mm. it's organic. So I love to see that. So that's why I'm so heavy on this indie artist movement. You know, we got to weed out those higher ups who, like you said, they want to take the intelligence out of our music. You know, mm. they want us to, you know, go by their narrative. But I think we also have a responsibility as parents too. like personally, my kids, they they know about the real hip hop. Yeah, they listen to some current stuff, but guaranteed they listen to some music that I grew up on as well. So they're well versed. You got my little girl who was nine years old on video at the <laughs> event, rocking out to some, you know, KRS One. That's what I'm jamming. talking about. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Let 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 us know about your queens, your girls. Okay. Yeah, so I have uh, two girls. I'm 18 year old Samia, my nine year old Samaria, and yeah, <laughs> like hey, right? <laughs> they, um, you know, they see the work I put in. Any event that I do, I have them participate in it with me. Like they came to that event, had a good time. Dope. Oldest got to meet little mama who was at the event. Dope. Just you know, I want them to be involved, and I want them to know you can do this. You can work hard. You, with still being classy, as right. you see, I don't expose right. myself. I'm always very classy. I don't twerk. I don't do none of that. I just, you know, put all my my intelligence, my creative effort forward, and that's that's how I get down. So I want them, right. you know, to kind of see what mom is doing, so they can stick with this narrative instead of going with whatever crazy stuff is going on now. Yeah, you you. I mean, you're laying a uh, a righteous path for them. Uh, the way. Um that I think a mom should do, you know, not, I mean, to all the moms that's twerking out there and that's what they have to do for a living. 
you know, mm-hmm. God bless them and take care of your family and do do everything right. that you have to do. Those that are just twerking the twerk, you know, right. cool peace to you. The ones that we're talking about is the ones that's twerking that has kids and don't give a shit. They'll rather right. twerk. They'll rather twerk than feed their kids. So that's you know that's what we're talking about. But the whole thing is that you know uh, you are setting the righteous path, the right, correct path you know, um, for your Queens, you know, that's another, you know, that's another testament of your, your, your strength and of, and of your will. And that's why, you know, why I wanted to talk to you, because like I said, you know, you being a mom and, and, um, and, and a mom of two, right. Uh Yeah. And, uh, -hmm. yeah. And a mom of two, um, uh, and, and raising them, and uh, showing them things in the world, and at the same time being a businesswoman, at the same time being an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur, um, and handling so many different things. I mean, you know, uh, like, do you do you actually get sleep? <laughs> you know, I had to learn. I had to learn to balance that. That's why I'm laughing because, <laughs> man, it would be in a beginning. You know, I, it took me a minute to find that balance. It was no sleep. Even now, I mean, I sleep. Right. You know, I, I think I get better sleep now right. because I've just um, I've kind of learned how to maybe schedule things a little more. But yeah, it's it's a lot, you know, because some just had somebody send me a message like, oh, so you're just a manager. I'm like, just a manager. I'm like, oh, no. So I had to run down the list to him. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm chief. I'm like, I'm chief brand officer of Certified Nation Entertainment. I'm a manager. I'm a publicist. I'm a content creator. Mm-hmm. I'm a writer. I have my own show. That's so, he was like, yeah. he was like, oh, excuse me. I'm like, yeah, don't get it twisted. So right, right. it's a lot of, you know, multitasking that you have to do. And then just finding that balance. God bless my 18 year old. She is so helpful with my youngest. And then they kind of know when I'm doing something. They know when I'm doing my show, they're like, all right, that's her right. space. And sometimes they get involved. They they're jamming to some of the music, too, that I got that I listen to. I, I have no doubt that they are. 1000% inspired by their mom and you're going to see them blossom into something that's like you plus a thousand. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's <laughs> going to be you plus a thousand. It's going to be wonderful. Definitely. You know, and that's, that's what it is. That's solid. That's, that's, that's real stuff. You know, um, I also wanted to get into um, uh, what would you like to see different uh, in this current music industry? What would you like to see different in the business of hip hop? Well, I would love to see people being more supportive of one another. You know, when you see a dope organic hip hop project come out, support that, share that. It doesn't cost to like, share, comment, get it out there. But, you know, also say, don't just stream, buy the album. If you can buy a couple of cups of Starbucks coffee, You can go ahead and buy an album you can support. So I think we need more of that support. I think we need a lot more artist education. I think people need to look into their hip hop history books, which versus, uh, for example, was a great example of that. That was a hip hop celebration and history in the making. So we need to get that out there. Um, I'm definitely all for the indie artists take over. You know, I, I don't really care if record labels get mad at me. I'm not really big on those some of those big record labels because it's all corporate and, you know, they have their one agenda, whereas we have our other agenda, you know, our people come together, like even your crew, the leftovers crew, shout out to them because they've been supportive of me too. Salute to the leftovers. Right. Big salute. So it's like, you know, just us coming together. I think we came all together, man, we can really take over this industry and switch that narrative. And that is, that's the gray area that's missing. It's this, you know, um, you know, with everybody, it's like that. You know, I mean, we have have uh, I got you know a few people that follow me. Um, you know, I know you have people that follow you, and you know, uh, you know, it's like say you may have sixteen hundred followers, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, the strength of all those sixteen hundred followers moving the way I'll say it like this: moving the way that you would like them to move. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Would be powerful. And that's what we still trying to harness, you know what I mean? By posting up, by, you know, doing constantly posting up and putting things up there, learning how this shit goes. We see what what people like and what what people, you know, uh, will skip by or whatever like that. But it's like the the power of 
if we can get all those people that that follow to really support, then it would be a solid network. You know, it's, it's still a gray area. It has to it has mm-hmm. to start. It has to start somewhere. Like you said, it has to start somewhere. It's either you like yep. the product. It's either you like the product or you don't. Right. If you don't. Cool. But if you like it and you like it enough, support it. You see, you know, everybody is going through a certain thing right now as far as in, in this crazy world. And uh, all support is 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 needed. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Without question. Definitely. I agree. And people are seeing it now. They're seeing the leftovers and certified nation entertainment right here to, you know, power movements coming together. It's just, you know, you get me up, ask me about the podcast. Boom. I gave the information. See, it's things like that, that, people that coming together. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's what I mean, you know, I was like kind of like saying, yo, I'm 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 a bit opinionated, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> for better for <laughs> You know what I mean? And I said, you know, well, I'm on. I'm, I think you know, everybody's doing this podcast shit. So why not? And maybe it'll be a, um, a different vehicle for me to help different artists and promote some of my shit and whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? But it'll be something something new um, since I'm not used to being in front of the camera. You know what I mean? Right. It'll be something new for me. But yeah, I mean, you 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 pointed me right in the right direction. And this is a comfortable fit for me so far. You know, I'm like, I'm liking, you know, how this goes. And like I said, I'm seeing what you're doing. Uh, t- tell us about the podcast. Oh, tell yes, us about I, that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I have the Let's Get Activated podcast. Um, we stream live every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, it's it's live on a Facebook, several Facebook pages, YouTube, Twitch, and our Certified Nation Entertainment website. Um, I primarily bring on independent artists just so they can get their story out, you mm-hmm. know, get their, get their music heard, you know, have more people tap into them. But I do have also brought, had legends on there like Cool Rock Ski. I've had cocaine on there. I've had even higher up, well, I should say more well-known indie artists like, you know, Mickey Fax, My. Sky Zoo on there who support, you know, the movement. So people like that, you know, people who are really into this indie artist movement, people supporting one another. It's definitely a dope vibe. And we are going to be on episode 44 on Thursday. So it's wow. it's moving. It's moving. Wow. wow. And all, <laughs> uh, all the episodes are usually live. Oh yeah, they're they're all usually live on all those platforms. But then afterwards, since it doesn't, you know, StreamYard does not connect to IG, I post it onto IG. Okay. So, so yeah. one, one more time for those uh, mm-hmm. for the times. Let let people know when when does it come on again? Sure. Um, let's get activated. Podcast. Um, we're live 7 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. Um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and our Certified Nation Entertainment website. Definitely. Please, please check that out. I mean, to uh, to everybody that's following me or, or you know, uh, checking in or whatever, you know, definitely uh, check for Samantha on that. If you are artist, um, rapper, singer, uh, if you're an actual artist, if you love to paint, you have some some beautiful artwork, whatever it is, and you need um, uh some kind of platform or some kind of expression to put yourself out there, contact Samantha and the let's get activated podcast. And that can maybe be a platform for you to, um, to know, to get yourself out there and talk. You'll be in good hands without question. Oh, definitely. And shout out to, you know, power rule was on there, you know, yeah. 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 Now, nah, nah, like I said, we've been, we've been shouting <laughs> out, we've been shouting out the leftovers and definitely yeah. salute to all my leftover brothers in the movement. But, you know, it's definitely saying in particular, the legend Prince Power Rule. You know what yes. I mean? It's like we've been mentioning a lot of legends here. Cool Roski, Special Way, and now Prince Power Rule. You know what I mean? You know, definitely that's my brother, my leftover brother. Love him very much. You know what I mean? And definitely um, that's that's definitely how um, you, you appeared on my radar. You know what I mean? Because of your support uh, with the leftovers and uh and prince power rule you know what i mean you giving him his flowers and uh and his respect so oh, yeah definitely. much respect and he even he showed up to the event this summer too so i was like dang you know that means a lot you know so definitely respect you know blanco yeah. sunez all of them like they all blanco, they've been showing sunez. bad love man so i That's really appreciate brother. it 
it's like it's humbling when I see the support. I'm like, yo, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it's and you know, it's, it's it's just beginning. You know what I mean? It's just beginning. It's just uh, this is like you know, um, the the first year, um, that uh, that I started this podcast. First year that uh, I got to know you and got, got to meet you. Um, and you know, sky's the limit from here. I mean, whatever that I can do and whatever that my talents could, could, uh, could help you with in your movement. Don't hesitate to ask, you know what I mean? The platform is all yours. I know you have your own podcast, but if you ever want to use my podcast for anything, anything, it's yeah. free. Feel Vice free. Vice versa. You know, yeah. let me Feel know, free. you know, yeah. we can do a combined podcast one of these days, you know, yeah. special. Yeah. We we'll get on some. We we'll get on some sunny and share some yeah, Regis, some Regis filming Kathy Lee, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. you know I'm not afraid of that. I'm getting into this though. I mean, this is this is cool. I mean, it's it's comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Cool. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. And you know, like us when we go, you know, like when I go live, you know, it's it's kind of anything goes. You know, any right. but it's right. But it's such a good vibe. It's okay. You know, you've had people's animals appear in the dang live and they're apologizing. I said, no, it's good. It's live. This is organic. This is what we do. But people love it. That's Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to build up. I'm going to build up to, to a bunch of live pro, uh, broadcasts. I'm going to build up to that. I'm definitely going to build up to that because, uh, you know, want to get that in that uh, that live interaction with the people, too. You know, they'll, they'll love it. Cool. Yeah, they'll love it because they'll comment. As you've seen, they will comment. They'll engage, and it's yeah. it, it's it's fun. It definitely yeah. is fun. Yeah, that's why I said mm -hmm. you know uh, with this joining. Um, I got a, uh, another podcast with the Black Variants podcast. It's more of a comic book type. I peeped that. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm a nerd too. You know what I mean? I'm a nerd at heart. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah, just you know, doing some fun stuff and getting good. The whole thing is good energy and good conversations, like the ones that we're having now, like the one that we're having now. You know, so um, yeah. Anything else you want to um, expound on and talk about, or any projects that's coming up that you want to? Uh, you know, and contact information where they can contact you, how they can contact you, you know, everything. Okay, sure. Well, you know, like I was saying before, we have a city to great the wordsmith drop in on December the 23rd. Um, we also have pen game classic Casos theme drop in on November 13th. This is a special anniversary of how we started this movement. I'm actually featured in the album myself, doing a little speaking in it, little, you know, a little, little intro. So first right. time I've ever been on the album. So hey, <laughs> I'm with it, you know. No, 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 yeah. salute. And we're just, you know, you want to look us up, you know, www.certifiednationentertainment.com. If you're looking for me, just type Samantha Lavelle, just like it's spelled. You can literally type it in Google. It'll get you to my IG. It'll get you to my Twitter. It'll get you to my Facebook. I'm pretty much open everywhere, you know, definitely. that makes it easy. Definitely. Yeah. That's that. That's dope. I mean, um, like I said, you continue to be an inspiration, not only to your daughters, but to a lot of other people too, including me. And, uh, it's definitely been, um, it's been a pleasure to, to talk to you. This is like, like I said, I'm just trying to get this interview thing going. And, uh, I definitely like how, how this one is, you know, how this, how, how this one went. I just got to kind of work on my cotton mouth and I'll be all right, Samantha. No, oh, you're doing great. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> You got him out. You're doing yeah, yeah. great. It, yeah. It's anything goes. You just sip a little water, you'd be good. Like yeah. I, got my, I got my little water on deck for me yeah, too. I gotta, so I, you know. I gotta find this. This that's the problem. I got this shit here instead of you know. Oh, yeah, so. that energy. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's getting me awful cotton mouth. So, all right. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> but thank you, thank you You're for welcome. coming by. Um, this has been real dope. Um, this is going to be the, the first of many interviews because, um, you know, definitely want to check in back with you and the things that you're doing. And uh, and yeah, you know, definitely support you on everything that you're doing. Definitely. Oh, Samantha. man. Much appreciated. I enjoyed myself, you know, for sure. You know, big salute to you. And I definitely got to get you on my podcast as well. So. Oh, Oh, anytime, yeah. anytime, yeah. anytime for me to run my mouth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there because, like I said, I'm usually not. Uh, in front of the camera, but now that I am, I'm running my mouth all day. Right, I'll, I'll message you out a date for get you on there, and you know I'll do the promo because, like I said, I create my own flyers too. That's me doing oh, yeah. all of that. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> good, good, good thing. Like I said it's a one stop shop. It's a one stop shop. I I really implore implore young artists, or let me scratch that. I really implore mm -hmm. artists 
of, mm-hmm. of whatever age that you might be to um to check Samantha out and uh inquire uh, about certain things that that may can help your career move forward. So definitely I'm I'm definitely pressing that point because I believe that um she can uh she can help you in some type of way or manner. No, oh, man, man, appreciate it. Yep, I'm here. You know, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So, salute to you, Queen. Salute, salute. This is uh definitely is not a goodbye, but until the next time, you know, definitely. Um, we'll see you, and um, definitely much love, Samantha much love. Lavelle. Samantha Lavelle. <laughs> yep, you Peace. got it. I told, I told you I was gonna get yep. it right. Man. Yep. Salute, <laughs> big salute. Definitely.